beyond my personal life and my experience of falling in love. My two ruling passions have been philosophy and politics. Hegel once remarked that the last remaining tragedy in the bourgeois world is the impossibility of combining a life of thought with a life of action. In fact, there is a deep emotional affinity between philosophy and politics. These are the two human activities that deal with everything rather than with anything in particular. And not only do they deal with everything, but they demand everything. They demand a complete mobilization of the emotions. And thus, despite the difficulty of doing them at the same time, uh, they have this remarkable resonance with each other. My interest in philosophy was aroused when I was seven years old. My mother read to me at night in little installments Benjamin Jowett's translation of Plato's Republic. And ever since then, speculative thought has seemed to me to be the highest task of the mind. For much of its history, philosophy has been a kind of would-be super science in the service of self-help. The self-help for the sake of which philosophy has been enlisted has been some way of coping with those ineradicable flaws in human life. Our mortality, our groundlessness, and our insatiability. Philosophy has claimed to present a foundational view that would allow us to respond to this dreamlike and tormented character of our existence. Then, as we have lost our confidence in this ideal of foundational knowledge, philosophy has sometimes degenerated into being a kind of thought police, a scholastic clarification of arguments that tells us how we can or cannot think and speak. But philosophy, as we should conceive it today, is the mind at war, rebelling against all the constraints imposed on it by the established disciplines and the predominant methods, and insisting on its prerogative to deal with the things that matter most. The philosophers who attracted me most were the philosophers who dealt with experience as a whole, with the whole real world, with the cosmos, with society, and with humanity. Beginning with Aristotle and Hegel. Hegel because he added to this ambition of worldwide understanding, the principle of historical consciousness. But I have also been immensely attracted to philosophers like Schopenhauer, whose views are the very inverse of mine. Philosophy, classical European philosophy, has been a constant inspiration of my thought. 
a second source of my ideas has been classical European social theory, the social theory of the 19th and of the 20th centuries, and in particular the social theory of Karl Marx, whose ideas I have also resisted for all of my life. The revolutionary project in social theory of understanding society as something that is made and imagined and can therefore be remade and reimagined has seemed to me to be one of the, the greatest projects of modern thought. A third source of my ideas has been the classic European novel of the 19th and 20th century. An unrivaled provocation to insight into our experience, into the fine texture of our humanity and of its possibilities for good and for bad. For many years, especially before I was able to return to Brazil, I threw myself into a series of theoretical projects with no thought of their reception in the world. I spent hundreds of nights alone in the libraries, in reading and in writing, trying to develop a project that would resist the dominant currents of belief. In the whole field of social and historical studies, we find the prevalence of ideas that have severed the vital link between insight into the actual and the imagination of the possible. In the hard social sciences, economics first among them, the rationalization of the existent so that the present arrangements are explained in a way that vindicates their naturalness, their necessity, or their superiority. In the normative disciplines of political philosophy and legal theory, a kind of pseudo-philosophical prop to the humanization of the established institutional order, an order that we feel powerless to reimagine and to remake. And in the humanities, a subjectivist adventurism entirely disconnected from the reconstruction of society. These rationalizing, humanizing, and escapist tendencies seem to be opposed to one another. In fact, they are allied in the work of disarming the transformative will and the transformative imagination. The theoretical projects to which I gave myself in all these years of isolation and speculation were intended to rebel against this circumstance and to establish a different way of thinking, a way of thinking for which time is real, history is open, and the new is possible. And above all, a way of thinking that would rescue the revolutionary orthodoxy of the West from its present disorientation by reinventing it. And thus I began a series of interventions in many different disciplines, in social theory, in legal theory, 
in economics, and in the general work of speculative thought, but all motivated by the same concern the same concern of saving this revolutionary orthodoxy and of finding a way to understand and to deepen the orientation to the future that would escape from the threat of estrangement from life lived right now. <laughs>